So at this point I'd like to show you the cards that are provided for each of the races to keep track of your race's characteristics and abilities. So here's the card for the L1Z1 mine net, where the you could think of them as the Borg. And here's the actual card. And as you can see, uh, I have pretty big hands. It's quite a large card. It's about a foot long and about six inches wide. So up in the Let's see if we can just zoom in here. Up in the top left corner, we see that they start with the following units. A space dock, a carrier, five ground forces, a dreadnought, some fighters, and a planetary defense system. And starting technologies are envirocompensators, stasis capsules, cybernetics, Hylar-5 assault lasers. Um, over here, special abilities. Their dreadnoughts are cheaper. Their dreadnoughts get plus one in space battles. Their ground forces get plus one when attacking. And they get an extra command counter for strategy usage. Here's a picture of them. Over here are some places to keep uh, counters, which are allocated for performing strategic actions, for how many major ships you can have in a system and counters for uh, actually performing actions like moving fleets. Then uh, here in the middle of the card, all of the cards have this uh, game turn summary here. So it talks about the strategy phase, the action phase, and then the status phase. Those are the major phases of the turn. And then the details on if one of the things you do during the action phase is take a tactical action, there's the steps involved in doing that. If you fight a space battle, there's the steps involved in doing that. And if you do an invasion combat, there's the steps there. So it's handy having the turn sequence right in front of all each individual player. Finally, you have a chart which shows the units you can purchase, their cost in planetary resources, the number they need to roll on a 10-sided die to score a hit in battle, so low numbers are easier to roll the um, movement in systems, so they can usually move one or two systems, and any special abilities they may have. For example, dreadnoughts can bombard a planet, and they can sustain one point of damage before being killed. Carriers have a carrying capacity of six. On the back of the, of the cards, there is story. It explains the L1Z1 mine net, and you can read all about them. So there's actually a whole stack of race cards here that represent all the different races. So again, we have the embers of Muat. Let me zoom out a little so you can see the whole card. So there's their card. The Ghosts of Creus. They tend to move through wormholes very well. The Mentac Coalition, the Pirates, the Necrovirus that steal your technologies, the Nalu Collective, the Snaky Sneaky People, the Emirates of Khan, the Expert Traders, the Universities of Jolnar, the Scientists, the Xjaz Kingdom, a diplomatic race, the Winu, another diplomatic race, the Yin, the Religious Fanatics, the Federation of Soul, Starship Troopers, the Sardak Nor, Nasty Space Bugs, the Serial Tribes, the uh, Spying Sneaky Race, Barony of Letnav, who are the uh, Space Industrialists, the Arborek, who are the Plant Creatures, and the clan of Sar, who are the uh, space nomads whose space docks actually float around and can move around in space. And um, finally, there's actually a card for the Lazax, who are the original imperial race. And in the special scenario included in the Shards of the Empire expansion, there's a whole bunch of special components, including this race, just to play that unique scenario which is 
basically the Galactic Empire is still in some degree of um, wholeness where the normal game starts out when the Galactic Empire is basically completely fallen. Uh, so some other components. Uh, first of all, um, let's take a look at the rules. I have three rule books here because the, uh, uh, of course, of the base game and the two expansions. So here's the base game rules. See, it's a rather large folder, and it's all there's some flavor text to kind of introduce the game, introducing all the components, number of players, game setup, the game round, creating the galaxy. Setting up your player area. I'll zoom in on that just so you can get a little sense of the details there. You know, suggesting how you would lay out things that you have. So typically you'll have technologies that you have purchased. You'll have the technology deck, which everyone has a deck that's the same uh, available technologies to them. Each race has a few unique technologies that only they can um, acquire. Control markers to mark planets that you control secret objectives, action cards, command counters for strategy, fleet supply, and taking actions, available command counters, your available ships, planets that you have conquered. The ones that are flipped upside down are the ones you have already expended their resources this turn. And up here we have some your race-specific techs and your uh, uh, trade agreements. Now actually there's even more, actually that's the trade uh, contracts and then that's a trade agreement. I'll do that again. That's a trade contract, that is a trade agreement. So it's basically the flip side of the card. So when you make a contract with someone you actually give them one of your trade contracts, they flip it over and it says that they have a trade agreement with you and says how many trade goods it's worth. So then there's uh, information on uh, how to set up another part of the board, which is sort of the draw piles and such. So, for example, we have uh, the uh, action card deck, the political card deck, uh, active laws that have been passed. We have a set of objectives that are available for players to score and a scoring track where people can mark what objectives they've scored. Typically, the goal is to get to 10 victory points to win the game. Over here we see a pile of bonus tokens, uh, trade tokens, extra tokens for ground forces and for fighters in case you run out of uh, figures for those, neutral planet cards that nobody has yet acquired, and then strategy cards which we'll talk about. Order of play, activating and moving systems, Information on space battles, examples of space battles, uh, invasion combat, showing about the systems, the nebula, the supernovas, the wormholes, the extra counters, talk about the race sheet and what's located where there. Spending resources and influence to purchase some units. Voting in the Galactic Assembly. Trade agreements and trading. Trade goods. Using carriers to transport. Detailed rules for particular units and what they can do. Then they begin the optional rules. So there's optional rules for playing with three players, playing with four, playing with five, um, playing a 14-point game, playing with all the objectives revealed at the start, something called Distant Suns, which allows you to put counters on all the unexplored planets, and when you land on the planet, then you find out what's there. It could be uh, an ancient civilization, and you find a free technology. It could be uh, friendly civilization that gives you trade goods. It could be the planet's radioactive and the people you landed die. Description about leaders. So you can have each race has three unique leaders that they can take into um, 
move around, and they are leaders have different effects, scientists, admirals, generals, diplomats, and agents. Uh, sabotage runs, kind of like fighters going against the Death Star. Then there's a summary of, of these strategy cards, which basically are picked every turn, and like the game Puerto Rico, uh, are used to determine who will move in what order in the, in the round, and different things that sometime during the round will have to happen. Like if somebody picks this technology strategy somewhere, as people take turns and goes, it goes around and around, they will eventually play this technology card and people will get to purchase technology. And then here on the back of the rules is some information about the planets and what some of the distant suns counters do that mark the special colonies. That's the base rules. You know, Shatters of the Empire included this set of rules. So Shattered Empires included some more flavor text, some more components, that's where the wormhole nexus came in, some new races, some new technologies, and new race-specific technologies, new planets, some other things that we'll take a look at, uh, artifacts, some new domain counters uh, for the larger galaxy, the new system tiles like the Ion Storm, the new planets with special abilities like Hope's End with the creating shock troops, some enough uh, new pieces to play a seven and eight player game, some new uh, variants including new strategy cards that you can use in in, uh, instead of or uh, completely replacing or partially replacing the original strategy cards. These tend to be a little bit more um, uh, combat oriented and, and then also there's a new set of objective cards that is much more uh, combat oriented and tends to uh, make a more action-packed game. More race-specific technologies, artifacts that can be on a planet that when you explore them they may be a real artifact or blank which gives you extra victory points. Rules for shock troops, rules for space mines so you can drop mines from your cruisers, the wormhole nexus, building colonies, facilities and uh, refineries to make your planets more worthwhile. Uh, some rules about uh, other uh, rules about, for example, distant suns being able to put the safer ones near people's home systems and the more dangerous ones further out so that your initial expansion isn't squashed by a radioactive planet. Um, and uh, some errata, and then descriptions of the new strategy cards. And so now some more. Uh, Distant Suns options, 